There are signs that the hoop had been moved. To sit it in front of my office, to be sure. I... I see. So that's how you throw a how you throw suspicion on people. It was a tip. But I think your conjecture is a little bit off the race track. I have very pretty eyes. Now you're just spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. You don't have a single reason to suspect me. So, he intends to claim his innocence to the end, does he? Most criminals do, sir. <laughs> I'm as pure and innocent as my jacket. And Miss Bird is as dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. My jacket's not dirty, I'll have you know. I just washed it yesterday. Please calm down, for I intend to show who is the one truly covered in slime here. Me, I promise. This is the... Yeah, uh, had the girl open... Okay, press. Using the master key, of course. Oh, you have a problem with that? That is what the master key is for, right? Perhaps we should place it uh, place it in an elaborate labyrinth of some sort of people like you. Okay, that's a weird way to say that. <laughs> and what were you doing in your office the entire time? I was doing my usual training regimen. Training regimen? Were you going through your law books from start to finish? <laughs> Mainly batting practice and some weights. Ugh, I jog when I... And I, ugh, and I jog when I get the chance. Wow! You must be the buffest prosecutor we have! I'm pretty sure Edgeworth lifts. With the weakest <laughs> legal muscles, it would seem. Damn! Sick burn! You smell that bacon? <laughs> I was doing my usual workout, so... Hmm. You don't have a single reason to suspect him. I think I've given you quite a few reasons, actually. Have you, though? Objection! But none of those would stand up on their own. Oh, God. I love when they get into an objection battle. <laughs> right? Then what about all the evidence? It's all circumstantial. No judge would convict on such flimsy evidence. He seems to be trembling a little. One more little push. All I have to do is find the flaw in his testimony. Oh, I know what it is. What is it? Okay, go to where he says he was in there all night. Or he was he spent oh, all his time in there. You're, oh, that's right, then, because Maggie the locked the it up for him. No, present the note that says he wasn't there. Oh, shit, yeah, that's right. Uh, entire time. Present, present. Oh, the note that says that he wasn't there. Okay, I'm gonna double check details. Uh, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter when because yeah. So, ba boom. Objection. Objection. Uh, sometimes I never feel smarter than figuring out one of the Phoenix Wright dumb puzzles. I know, right? Well, that's that's part of the <laughs> the the charm to not only these puzzles but also the Resident Evil puzzles because they're. They're just the right amount of complex to make you feel really satisfied, but also are not simple enough to be just given away. Yeah. That was a lie. What are you talking about? How was that a lie? This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? It was left under your door, or did you not notice? And right here it says... But you're out. Uh, uh, giving my sweatband a run for his money. You were not in your own. <clears throat> you were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then, where were you and what were you doing? <laughs> Shall I explain it in full detail for you? 
You were busy Oops. snooping around in my room. The v the very room you had Miss Bird open for you. What was that? That was my alarm. Oh. Z that's just nonsense! You have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me. Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. No way! This is proof positive that you had Miss Bird open the door for you. Uh, is it the hand- the fingerprints on the door? Is it the fingerprints on oh, the yeah, key? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it'd be the- Because it only has her prints on the- on the key. But her prints are missing from his door. Oh! That's true, you're right. Take that! Take that! I had your door dusted for prints. My door? <sighs> what for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Yeah! Oh, prints? What does they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way. If she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Further, all of the prints on my office door's knob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it's because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you- What's a charade? Yeah. It took me a second. I was like, wait, don't say charade. <laughs> we know you s s you stole into- uh, we know brain, you my... stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from. I wonder if I should say you snuck into my office. I, yeah, I it's supposed to. It's oh man, my brain broke when I when I hit stuff like that. It breaks <laughs> me. Uh, I'm gonna skip. <laughs> and Detective Faith found you out, possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Portsman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. <laughs> as I said when you had the gun to my back. No one gets away with committing murder in my office. Uh, <laughs> Huh? <laughs> and just what's so funny, pal? That look of stiff seriousness on the face of this of this office's finest prosecutor. As he makes a huge mistake in accusing me is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edgeworth just explained it all and he even backed it up. You're the murderer. Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already. And as I said earlier, it's also circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you checked my doorknob fell prints? Well, I can readily confess that I had wiped that knob down as well. Huh? A little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the knob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's prints and my own would be on there. You... you made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the notes Jim left for me, do you know exactly when that was? For all we know, he could have left it there just 
he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like early evening, for example. Are you saying you failed to notice a note in your doorway? Eh, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied with work-related matters, also no excuse. Now that's just a flat out lie! There's no way you didn't notice a note that size! Ah, but you can't prove that, can you? Say something, Mr. Edgeworth! Back me up here, sir! God! Portman makes a good point. I can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for all of us if I had told you from if I had told you sooner. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had the unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Ask around. I am sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like. You'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, yes, sir. I'll go check out his alibi, sir. Be right back. M Mr. Edgeworth, sir. I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. The guys down in criminal affairs said they saw him at around 2 a.m. You see? All of the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. I dare you to try and find it. Hold it. Yeah, press all of his statements just to see what yeah, he has just to see to... himself. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was two. Ooh, giving testimony like a pro. Okay, so you came back to your office at two. That, how does he know? Oh, I guess maybe Edward told him. Let's just press all his statements. Yep. <laughs> it is as you say, however... Yes, however, you are the only one who claims the culprit- oh wait. Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Couldn't see shit. Oh, come on now, I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. That's the point. Oh well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. So you paid the Criminal Affairs Department a visit. Yep. Right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Wait a second, didn't he say that he was in his office the whole time? Yes, he did. Okay, so that was the last one. All I need to do is press him. Okay, da da da. 
which we did ask around, so... Let's see, what do we got here? Not much, you yeah. must say. Hmm. Huh. Well, it's like I'm gonna open up my trusty walkthrough. I mean, brain. Yes, I must consult the logic center of my mind palace. <laughs> Hmm. Press everything. Oh, everything? Yeah. Wow, I didn't press the very you last press... one. Yeah. Hold it. Huh, well, we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. <clears throat> and it was just as I said, right? Yes, sir. A number of detectives said they had saw you at around that time. I have the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ah, impossible. He actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why is this sudden sudden look on your face? Can't say... Can't you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we've reached the end of the line and it's time to get off this crazy train. User. Sir. Please escort this young lady out. But remember, be gentle. Maggie. What if gum shoe? A second. Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. If only I had a clue. Did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? I need to calmly think this through. One more time. And with logic. Logic! Another handgun and his alibi. That's, like... That's all I got. Yep. Oh, and they are uh, precinct issued handguns too that was used. Oh yeah. There were two bullets left at the scene of the crime. One that robbed Mr. Faith of his life and one that nearly robbed me of my jacket. It's a very nice jacket. However, the murder the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once, meaning that it is entirely possible that a second gun was used in my office tonight. But, seeing as how the killer had to steal Mr. Faith's gun, I doubt the killer had another gun up their sleeve. Therefore, the second gun could have been the property of an entirely different person. Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight.